All right, in this video, we're going to look at some DMA 20 sample questions that you may see on the DMA placement test. Uh, you may see these in your DMA 20 class, uh, very similar types of problems. And uh, before we jump into them, here are the things that are covered in DMA 20, uh, fractions and decimals. So you're gonna look at relationships between fractions and decimals, uh, real world problems that involve fractions or decimals, operations with fractions and decimals, such as the order of operations, circumference and area of circles, the concept of pi, uh, commonly referred to as 3.14, and application problems involving decimals. Now, um, these sample questions that I have here, they're not, they're not going to cover every single topic, but you can always visit this website here where I assure you I cover every single topic here. So feel free to check that out as well. But let's have a look at some sample questions. Uh, the first one here, a large dining room table is in the shape of a semicircle, which is a half circle, of diameter 12 feet, as shown above. Of the following, which is closest to the area of the table, uh, use pi equals 3.14. Now I'm going to make the assumption here, if you've seen uh, this video series, the intro, uh, you, you don't have a calculator to use on the placement test and probably for DMA 20, the DMA 20 questions, you cannot use a calculator either. So let's just do all of this stuff without a calculator. Um, we want to find the approximate area of this dining room table. Now, no, understanding the area of a circle, that's one thing you want to know here. The area of a circle is pi r squared. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Now, this is the area of a whole circle. So Let's do area equals pi, it says use pi equals 3.14, so we have 3.14 times our radius squared, that's what that R stands for. The radius is going to be half of the diameter. So the radius will be 6, since the diameter all the way across, that's 12, half of that will be 6. So times 6 squared. So really we're looking at an area of, or this formula, this uh, answer here will be 3.14 times 36. So uh, assuming now, here's how you can multiply decimals. Um, I'm going to ignore the decimal right now. I'm going to write 314 and I'm going to multiply it times 36. I'll worry about what to do with this decimal in a moment. So let's multiply all this out. Um, here we got what, uh, so 6 times 4 is 24. Put down our 4, carry our 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. Now, we're moving over to the 3. we got to add a 0 before we start using this 3. So, 3 times 4 is 12. Put down our 2. Carry our 1 over. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And 3 times 3 is 9. Let's add all this up. So, we get 4, 8 and 2 is 10. Uh, that's 8, 9, and then 4 is 13, and then 9, 10, 11. All right, so we get our answer looks like 11,304. Now, since this was technically 3.14, here's a little trick. You just count how many places you have to the right of the decimal. We have one, two places to the right of that decimal that we had up here. We had no digits to the right of the decimal down here. So therefore, in our answer, since we have two places here, no places here, we want to be two places down here. Now, if we did have some places here, you know, you can check. I got plenty of videos on this, too. But essentially, you're going to add up the how many places in all you have to the right of the decimal when you start putting your answer down here like this. Now, let's be careful here. Uh, 113.04. This was the formula for the area of a whole circle. We want a semicircle. So a semicircle, the area would be half. Since this is a half circle, we take this area here. Now, I'm just going to say, hey, what's a nice number that this is close to? Because it does say approximate, and I'm looking at my answers here, um, this answer is pretty close to a 114. Now, I'm not rounding. I'm just throwing a number out there. It's kind of close to 114. Since we want half of this, because remember, this was the area of a whole circle, Half of 114, if you take 114 and you divide it by 2, 2 goes into 11 uh, 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10. That's as high as we can go there. Subtract, we get a remainder of 1. Bring down our 4. 2 goes into 14 7 times. So that right there is going to be our approximate area, 57 square feet. Now be careful here. 
Um, A and C, throw them out the window. But notice this 113 matches this answer we had over here. This would have been the answer had we had a whole circle. I know that's not a perfect drawing or whatever, but had this dining room table been a whole circle, that would have been our approximate area. But since it was a semicircle, we wanted half of that area of the whole circle. All right, so that's number one. Let's look at another one. Number two, the large square above has area nine and is divided into nine smaller squares of equal area. Um, what is the length of the path drawn in bold. Well, let's think about this. The area of a square, if I just go ahead and count, that's one, two, three. So let's just write a three there. This will be one, two, three. That's a three right there. So the area of a square is three times three, length times width. And it's the same thing as the area of a rectangle. So three times three is nine. That matches that area right there. So all this bold line represents right here is one unit. And we want to find the length of the path drawn in bold. So there's one unit, 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 and there's one unit. So let's add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the length of that path. Now this could have been a little bit trickier had the area been something, say, I don't know, um, 36 or something like that. But for now, it was just nine. So we said, okay, three by three will give us an area of nine. That means each little piece that you see right here represents one unit. And we just add them all up to get from here down to here, and that was six. Number three, let me write this a little bit clearer for you. This is 0.6, or 0 0.6, that zero is not really important right there, divided by, and that's 10 to the negative two. All right. Now, let's rewrite this. Since our answers are either integers or decimals, I want to write all this stuff, all these things as a decimal. Um, 0.6 already is a decimal, divided by, now, 10 to the negative 2. You have to know what a negative exponent means here. Um, there's a couple of ways that we can deal with this. I'm going to remind you of one thing. We can write 10 to the negative 2 as 1 over 10 squared. You can shoot a negative exponent to the bottom of a fraction. Um, that's one way to deal with it. So we have 0.6 divided by... 1 over 100. All right, again, I don't see any fractions here, so let's rewrite 100, 1 100th. Um, right now, that is a decimal. What is that going to be? That's going to be 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.01. Because this right here represents 1 100th, because that falls in the 100th spot. So you got to know your place values here. 1 100th is 0.01. Think about one out of a hundred pennies. One out of a hundred pennies is one cent, and that's what one cent looks like. So now we want to take 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.01. Therefore, let's set up a long division problem. We got 0 0.01 on the outside, 0 0.6 on the inside, and a way to, that we can divide decimals quickly is to uh, whatever we're dividing by. Right here, let's make this a whole number. So I'm going to move that decimal two places to the right. And when I'm, the reason why I'm doing that, I'm making this a whole number, essentially that just becomes one. Now, if we're gonna move this decimal out here, we have to move the inside the exact same number of places. Two places to the right, one, two. So therefore, this becomes 60. Really, this just means what's well, 60 divided by one. Well, 60 divided by one is 60. So A will be our answer right there. Now, are there other ways of dealing with this? Sure. Um, let's talk about them since we have a little bit of time here. Um, right here, 10 to the negative 2. Um, this 10, now, this is a little shortcut. 10 to the negative 2, what we could have done, since this is 10 to a power, uh, we already said this was, what, 1 over 100? Um, right down here. Okay. Well, let's read this. What's that? That's 6 tenths. So let's rewrite this. 0.6 is the same thing as 6 tenths because that 6 falls in the tenth spot. So we have 6 tenths divided by, this 10 to the negative 2 was 1 over 100. All right. Now, when we divide fractions, this is something I wanted to remind you of. Uh, dividing fractions, I think of it as keep, change, flip. We keep the 6 over 10. 
we change our division to multiplication and we flip this to 100 over 1. Maybe you have heard of this as multiplying by the reciprocal. Same thing. All right, and let's multiply this out. These numbers, I know they're big, but they're not bad. 6 times 100 is 600, and 10 times 1 is 10. Well, 600 divided by 10, if you do that little bit of long division, or maybe you know this off the top of your head, we can cancel out those zeros, a little shortcut. Well, 60 over 1, that's 60. Same answer. That's just another way to get it. On to number 4. All right, scientific notation, 3,590. Now, when we write this thing as scientific notation, we only want one digit to the left of the decimal. Here's what I mean, 3.590. Or how about we just go ahead and say 3.59. Oh, All right. Now, obviously, 3,590 is not the same thing as 3.59. But here's a little quick way to deal with scientific notation. Since this number is bigger than this number down here, um, what we have to do is we have to multiply it by 10 to a certain power, and it needs to be a positive power because we want to make this number bigger and make it match this up here. Here's how you can do that quickly by multiplying by 10. How many places did we move this decimal to move it here? We moved it one, two, three places. That's what you write right there. 3.59 times 10 to the third. That is going to be our answer. Now you can think about this a little bit more as well. Essentially, we could say 3.59 times, now 10 to the third. 10 to the third means 10 times 10 times 10. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. Now if you were to multiply this out, 3.59 times 1,000, that's the same thing as 3.59 times 10 cubed, and I assure you that you would get 3,590. But this is called scientific notation, so if that's a little weird, you know, I'll just go to my website, check out my videos on scientific notation. And the same thing applies to the, all the other topics um, we've covered so far in these first four questions. One more here. So the circle above has center O, <clears throat> the fraction of the area of the circle that is shaded represents a value on the number line between which two fractions down here? Um, this is going to involve a lot of decimal work here. So uh, think of this as a slice of pizza, the shaded region, and that's only a fraction of the entire pizza. And I always think of an entire circle as having 360 degrees, but we're only dealing with 75 right here. 75 degrees. So let's take 75 out of 360. Um, we can do some long division, but I tell you what, let's simplify this fraction first. That's probably the better idea to do, um, is simplify it, then maybe do some long division. Plus, it's just good to review on how to simplify fractions. Um, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but uh, 15, we could divide by 5, and then we could divide by 3, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that 15 does go into both of these numbers. Um, do some long division, make sure you understand these, but 75 divided by 15, um, that would be 5 times, because 5 times 15 is 75, and 360 divided by 15 will be 24, because 24 times 15 is 360. Now, um, here, 5 over 24, I don't see anything with a denominator of 24, unfortunately. So uh, let's do some long division with this. So 5 divided by 24. That means we put 24 on the outside and we put 5 on the inside. 24 won't go into 5, so we have to make this, think of it as 50, but technically it's 5.0. But that decimal that I just wrote right there, let's go ahead and shoot it up and put it right there. This is how we can divide with decimals. So you do want to think of this as 50. 24 times 2, that will be 48. That's as close as you can get to 50 there. Uh, 50 minus 48 gives us a remainder of 2. So let's bring down another 0. Alright, does 24 go into 20? 0 times. Alright, so we got to put a 0 up there. Every time we add a new space, we have to fill in something up here. Let's add yet another 0. Now, you probably cannot use a calculator for this because we want to make sure that you can work with decimals. So how many times does 24 go into 200? Um, let me take a wild guess. Maybe it's 8. Let's see what 24 times 8 is. 
4 times 8 is 32, so we got 2 carry our 3, 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 192. Yeah, we don't want to go any further than 8 times 24. If we did 9, we would pass 200 definitely. So uh, 24 times 8 is 192. Subtract, what do we get a remainder of here? We got to do some borrowing, or we can just go ahead and say 200 minus 192. That's pretty close to 200. Our remainder is 8. I tell you what, I'm going to bring down one more zero. Um, 24, let's see, well, 24 times 4 is 96. What's 24 times 3? That's going to be 72, isn't it? 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Yeah, 72. So uh, 24 times 3 is 72. Subtract this, we get a remainder of what? 8. Um, maybe you're starting to see a pattern. We're always going to get this 80 72 thing. Even if we bring in another 0, it's the same thing. So this is where you had that repeated decimal. 0.2083. 3333333 keeps on getting repeated. So here's our decimal. You definitely want to make sure you can work with these decimals. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and go to the correct answer. And I think it's D. Now, basically, since we didn't have 25 as a denominator, we, we couldn't, you know, just automatically throw it in between here. So let's look at 5 over 25 and 6 over 25. Now, there's two ways you can look at this. Um, I mean, met, I, let me do the long division way first. So 5 over 25 means 5 divided by 25. So 25 goes on the outside, 5 goes on the inside. And again, let's do that same thing. 25 won't go into 5, so let's think of this as being 50, but it's really 5.0. But 25 times 2 is 50. Subtract, we get a remainder of 0. So therefore, 5 over 25 is equal to 0.2. Let's remember that. Let's look at 6 over 25. I'm going to show you a shortcut with this too right here in a second. 6 over 25, very similar, except now instead of having 5.0, we got to have a 6.0 or 60. Bring my decimal up here. Um, that's still going to be 2 times because 2 times 25 is 50. Subtract, we get a remainder of 10. Let's bring down one more zero because 25 wouldn't go into 10, obviously, but 25 will go into 100 four times perfectly. So look at these two decimals that we got here. Um, a little shortcut, I don't know what this stuff is. A little shortcut right here. If you think about 25, um, 25 goes into 100 four times. So think about it, it's kind of weird. Uh, four cents, think of four cents. I'm trying to give you a shortcut. Think of four cents. If you took 25 of these four cents, that would go into a dollar perfectly. Well, how much money would you have if you had five of these four cents? You'd have 20 cents. That's just a way you can think about, think about money. So um, again here, uh, four cents, if you had 25 four cents, you'd have a dollar. Well, how much would you have if you only had six of these four cents? Well, four cents times six would be 24 cents. Kind of weird to think about it like that, but a little bit of mental math nonetheless. So we got these two fractions. 5 over 25 is 0 0.20. 6 over 25 is 0 0.24. Notice that this answer that we got what seemed like ages ago, uh, 0 0.2083, the 3 gets repeated, this number, this decimal right here, falls right in between these two numbers. So therefore, we can say that fraction up here, that 5 24 that we got earlier, 5 24 falls right in between these two uh, fractions right here. All these other ones, that would have been too small, that would have been too small, that would have been too small. Because these fractions here are smaller than these fractions here. But again, uh, I know that was crazy, bringing all these zeros down. But again, DMA 20 is fractions and decimals, so you want to make sure that you can work with fractions and you can work with decimals. But uh, there you have it, five sample questions. And of course, did I cover all the topics back here that I mentioned at the beginning? Absolutely not. Um, but please visit my website, and I assure you uh, I have videos that cover all these topics to help you prep uh, more for that DMA 20 portion of the placement test. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.